Welcome back to the Data Protection Diaries. Welcome back to the vlog. In today's video, we're going to be talking about everybody's favourite GDPR requirement, ROPA. The difference between this video and the last video that we did on ROPAs is that we're not going to be talking about how to do a ROPA. We're going to be talking about how to make your ROPA work for you. So how to get the absolute best out of your ROPA and how to see it as a business benefit rather than just a business burden. If you enjoy this video, please do make sure to give it a uh, thumbs up, comment down below if you want to add anything to the conversation. And of course, if you're not already, please do make sure that you subscribe to the channel. We are well on our way uh, to 1,000 subscribers. If we can do that by the end of the year, I think that would be pretty cool. But anyway, for now, let's get on with what we want to talk about today. As many of you already know, a ROPA or a record of processing activity is a requirement under Article 30 of the GDPR. The requirement specifically is to document processing activities. So names, contact details, the kind of processing, information that is involved in the processing, so the categories of information, how long the information is stored, and in some instances, technical and organisational security measures around that processing. OPAs are, for the most part, probably the one thing that people like to do the least when it comes to any kind of data protection compliance, just because they are long, they take a lot of time to do, they can be very complicated, and if you're doing them in spreadsheets, for instance, they can also be very big. One of the biggest challenges that we always find when we're dealing with clients is that once we've created a ROPA or we've drafted a ROPA, it then just kind of sits in a folder, nobody really does anything with it, nobody really knows what to do with it. And in all honesty, unless your processing activities are changing on a regular basis, you're probably never gonna go back and look at it again. So you don't really have a reason to go into it. And it's for that reason that many people and many organizations tend to shy away from doing it because it's just seen as a laborious task. It never does has any you know, business benefit in the long run. So what's the point of doing it? You know, just in case the regulator comes to call. There are many reasons for doing a ROPA. First of all, it's obviously a regulatory requirement. That should be your number one reason. But number two, it can give you a lot of insight into your organisation, into the kind of information, the processing activities, systems, and a lot of other things that can be very useful in your role as either a privacy lead, DPO, compliance person, or just as the person responsible for um, within the organization for looking after these things. Even if you're just, you know, if you're the MD or a director, a ROPA can be a very useful tool in showing what your information is, where it's being processed, and what systems it is sitting on. To get the absolute best out of your ROPA and to make it a usable, friendly, and continually growing document, there are some things that you can do to add into it. We've already talked about the fact that you have to have processing activities, you have to have the data controller, you have to have um, retention requirements. But one of the good things that you can add in that makes it a little bit more sticky is your information asset information. Now, for some companies, you will already have an information asset register and you may already have a ROPA, two separate documents. What you can do is merge those things together. Now this is easier if you're using technology or privacy software than it is if you're using a spreadsheet, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it on a spreadsheet. By adding in the information asset, so by adding in, you know, when you've got HR processing, processing for recruitment purposes, you know, what information you're using, if you then add in a column that says we're using this specific HR tool, so you add in that piece of software, you're adding in that information asset. The next thing that you can add in is whether or not there's a contract in place. The next thing you can add in is when the expiry date for that contract is. You can add in a column about whether a DPIA was done against that particular processing activity, against that particular system, when that DPIA was done, 
who was responsible, when is the next time it's supposed to be reviewed. Once you start adding all these additional things into your roper, you start to see that actually it can be quite a useful tracker for the organisation and you can use it to start monitoring different processing activities around the business. This again is a lot easier if you're going to be using uh, software because obviously you can set up automated reminders for people, you, know, you can ping people emails, but if you're not using software, you are just using spreadsheets, there's nothing to stop you from adding a reminder in your diary. You know when a contract is going to be up for renewal, you know who is responsible for that contract. Having a marker in your diary just to ping them an email and say, you know, is this contract up for renewal? Are we continuing with the same people? Can you let me know? And doing that is now allowing you to make sure that your roper is being updated regularly and it's not just sat in a folder on a drive gathering dust because nobody knows what's going on and nothing has really changed. Much of this may already be in place if you're in a much larger, larger, larger organisation because you may already have a contract management system, you might already have an information asset register out with your IT team, but for a lot of the smaller companies and the smaller and medium enterprises, those kind of things don't already exist. So feeding them into your ROPA means that you only have one document, one place that you need to go for information, one um, source of the truth, and it also means that you're meeting regulatory requirements while following information governance and information security best practices, keeping track of your assets, keeping track of your third parties, keeping track of contracts you start to create a really useful document that the business is going to start to see some benefit from and you don't just have this document that only your DPO ever looks at or you only ever look at when you're doing an audit. I'm not going to pretend that this is an easy thing to do. I'm not going to pretend that it's quick, that it's simple, because it's not. It is going to take you some time. And that's the other thing to remember. This isn't about doing this in a day. It's not about doing this in a week. This is about a gradual process. It's about getting to learn more about your organisation, understanding what systems, processes, what controls, what documentation already exists, and then bringing that together to make one useful source of information that can be accessed by the people who need it. It is going to take you time. It is going to be beneficial. And once you've got it done, you're going to be able to demonstrate some longevity. You're going to be able to demonstrate the benefits. And more importantly, you're going to have a roper that is more useful than just what is required under the regulation. As always, this is a fairly succinct view on the world. I'm fairly sure um, that plenty of my peers are going to have something to say about this and they're going to have differing views. Obviously, please feel free to drop those down below. I'd love to get the conversation going. But if you do like these videos, please do give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much.